with Andre and Jos. He's a Grammy Award winning DJ uh, known by his stage name RAC, also known by all his involvement in Ethereum and DeFi. Andre, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Super excited to have you. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm, st I'm stoked to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um, so I always start uh, this podcast with the question of how you got into crypto. Um, and in your case, it's especially interesting because you're still obviously a full time artist and, and musician. You're not uh, like working in crypto, but still really interested in, in it and, and experimenting with it. Um, so really, you know, interested to, to know, like, what got you in, into this space and what kind of kept you here? Yeah, no, it's, it's always interesting because I think everybody has like their own story. Like everybody has that, where did you first hear about Bitcoin story, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, um, so uh, I had just maybe to give it a broader perspective, I had yeah. always been interested in computer science. So I, um, I took a couple of courses. Uh, I was always very into computers. Um, it's just a part of my life, you know. Uh, it goes hand in hand with music production. So it, it, just, it just made sense for me to kind of stay with it. So, you know, that backdrop, I guess, uh, I've, especially with like um, dist distributed networks, like I'd always been kind of interested in this. Mm -hmm. and. And uh, I'd sort of followed things here and there. Um, you know, I never worked in that world, but it was something I was just interested in. So, you know, I naturally had heard about Bitcoin at some point, but I didn't have a financial background. It wasn't like, it wasn't something that I like immediately looked into. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even really remember where the first time I heard about it, maybe, I don't know, maybe 2013, 2014, something, you know, an article or something mm -hmm. <laughs> popping up. So right. I, I was like vaguely familiar with it. But it, it really started in in um, like late 2016, where uh, I I don't know I I don't know what led me to it. I think I was just like, okay, maybe now is the time to check it out. Uh, I uh, I had sort of gotten a little bit more into investing, and I had you know uh, gotten into stocks and like things like that. So I was mm -hmm. like trying to become a little more well versed in that, and uh, I think I, I I maybe looked into Bitcoin a bit. And, you know, I think I had a moment where I realized like, oh, the, the technology behind it is actually really interesting. Like without really mm -hmm. understanding the financial side of, you know, hard money or like mm -hmm. any of that, uh, I, 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 was, I was pretty interested in, in, in yeah, the, the technological breakthrough that mm -hmm. it was, you know, because uh, in my own experience in music, I, I had seen what, um, you know, what digital scarcity or the lack thereof, you know, can, can uh, wreak havoc on, on <laughs> you know, uh, like when you can infinitely copy uh, music, you know, what, what that can do to, to an industry that depends on that sort of scarcity model. So right. uh, I think just from an, just from an ideas perspective, I guess it was interesting, you know, they, how, how can you create something that's actually provably digitally scarce, you know? So I, 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 I kind of looked into that and through digging, I, I stumbled on this video of Vitalik Buterin talking about, um, I mean, it was probably like some kind of DEF CON speech right. talking about this idea of, well, taking that that Bitcoin blockchain idea, but apply, but generalizing it to anything uh, and making it programmable. And I, again, it wasn't really the money thing, like, because that wasn't my background. I was just like, okay, th th I mean, that's the currency is an interesting application of it, but there's so much more to this. Um, and so that, that sent me down a rabbit hole. I was like, okay, <laughs> who is this? This kid is clearly a genius, you know, um, let me dig into this. And, you know, the more I read into it, it's like, oh, there's so many interesting applications for, for music and, and really the, the back end of music, not, not necessarily uh, on the consumer side, but. Um, like distributing you know, it. Yeah, yeah, like the, the distribution, but also like the the it's the 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 piping of the music industry is filled with middlemen. It, it's one of the worst, I think. Uh, so I, I think it's actually one of the more obvious examples of like where this this intermediation could actually have a really profound impact. Um, but we have a really entrenched industry that is very resistant to change. So it's it's a kind of I, I saw, I, I see it as like ripe for disruption, I guess. And, and, and Ethereum seemed like a very logical application of that. So um, so I I guess like as I dug more into it, I, uh, I just 
you know, I, I, I like I kept thinking about like all these different applications that you could do. And I did some digging. I, found, I was like, okay, surely enough, there's like some, surely there's some people that have done something here. And uh, that's when I discovered Ujo Music, which was uh, part of Consensus. And um, I, I reached out to them and, and we, I think this is maybe three or four months before my album was going to come out because uh, I had been working on an album and I was like, why don't, why don't we just try to re release this on Ethereum? You know, it could be an interesting project. They had already done one single with uh, Image and Heap back in the mm -hmm. day. So I knew it was possible. It was just like, okay, how, let's, let's do this. You know, let's do a full album. And, uh, you know, I think they, <clears throat> yeah, they, they kind of got excited about it. And um, I think they were just like, they were really excited about all these ideas, but I don't think they had anybody in the industry on my side of the things really reach out to them and show interest. Cause I think mm -hmm. it was more them trying to sell, sell it, you know, sell the idea. So mm -hmm. I think they were stoked about it and um, you know, the idea was very simple. It was literally just putting it up, putting it up on IPFS and and having um, people basically like set up a smart contract that uh, you know if people give uh, ten dollars of ether to uh, to this contract, you get sent an IPFS link and you can download MP3 files or WAV files or something like that. Okay. And so it was like very simple. I mean, mm -hmm. it, this this exists technically. Um, you know, elsewhere, you know, iTunes, uh, Bandcamp, mm -hmm. the, the, there's lots of services that provide this, except that they take a percentage of it. So mm -hmm. this is a, an interesting direct connection type of a thing. So nice. for me, it was more of an experiment, you know, it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't exclusive, you know, I wasn't the only place you could get the album. Right. Uh, and, and how did it work out? Like, uh, how many it, people so downloaded it through there? I think maybe I want to say in between like 300, 500. I'm not in entirely sure. So not, not a lot, I mean, but, but, but like not still, bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I wasn't, I wasn't mad about it, but it, it was, um, I, I think, you know, I, I, I learned a lot from it and, and I, my objective was really to have it be more of an experiment and, right. um, and just kind of like a talking point basically. Mm -hmm. So, so at least to start a conversation about this. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think 300 to 500 people maybe. Um, and, but, but we very quickly realized that, you know, especially for my fan base, which are not crypto natives, not like tech, like not that, I mean, they're savvy, but not like crypto savvy. And, you know, having to go through Coinbase to get to buy Ether to transfer. You know, this was at the time where you had to wait like a week to get to wire funds oh, into okay. Coinbase. And yeah. so, like, the whole process of getting Ether into MetaMask and to like do all this stuff, like, to me, it was like the coolest thing ever. But, um, you know, from a, a user experience, is, <laughs> uh, you know, not that great. Mm -hmm. So, I think despite that, it was, it was a great success. And right. um, I'm, I'm really proud of that. And, uh, I have this kind of like funny memory of it um, again, because it, it, it uh, I remember having like a meeting with Spotify and that was like literally the first thing that they asked me about. I was like, what's this Ethereum thing? What are you doing with that? And I was like, ha ha. <laughs> um, what did they say? Oh no, I think they were just generally interested in it. Okay. Um, it. They were just, it was just a friendly thing. It wasn't like, you know, I don't think they were threatened by it. It was just okay. more like, it's like, what are you doing? What, what is that? <laughs> um, but, but I have this other memory of, uh, so I, I was, I was doing, I was on tour. I was actually in Japan and um, we were doing like a full day of like interviews and, and that type of thing. And I had a translator uh, that was, um, you know, I, I felt kind of bad for her because she had to translate all, like people get asking me about Ethereum and like trying to, <laughs> to talk about Ethereum through a Japanese translator oh, no. and like <laughs> communicate all of this stuff and all these ideas. Like it, it was a bit tricky, but um but again, it was uh, it was generally interesting to see the amount of interest ar around this simple idea, you know. So I, I think it was it was a very successful experiment, I guess. Yeah, um, and I, I guess like it was was it the first time you were able to sell um, an album kind of in this way directly to your your fans without having to go through um, a middleman? Like I, I guess like that's. That's pretty remarkable, even if it mm -hmm. 
you had to have, have this like bad user experience, it was still kind of a, a direct contact with them, right? Yeah, it, it was, it was, um, I, I think it, 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 it was more about showing that it was possible. Right. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, you can extrapolate from there, you yeah, know, yeah. We, we, could, we could take it a lot further. Um, I'm, I'm interested to, to go deeper into, you know, what you mentioned about the music industry being so ripe for, for uh, disruption, because I think in DeFi and, and I think maybe even in crypto in general, you, you focus a lot on kind of finance and, and that's kind of the low hanging fruit. And that's where you see like so many like fees and, and steps uh, put in between your transactions with, with middlemen. And I don't think a lot of people really think about the, the music industry as also right for disruption with mm -hmm. blockchain technology. So, you know, like for, for uh, most of my uh, listeners won't be as familiar with, with that industry. So I would love to hear more about, about that. Like what, uh, what, who are these middlemen? Like how, yeah. how are you losing out because they're there? Like how, how do you think this technology can actually help? Yeah, so um, it's, yeah, I, I feel like I, I could easily spend, you know, four hours, like breaking this down, but, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try to sort of condense it. Mm -hmm. But I think more broadly speaking, basically, every step of the way, um, there is somebody taking a percentage of gross of gross revenue. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, let's, let's say, let's talk about streaming. So, um, you know, streaming, uh, right off the bat, there's 30% off the top. Uh, and and then from there, there's a just there's another distributor that takes another uh, ten to fifteen percent off the top of that, and then mm -hmm. that eventually goes to the labels, and then you have a, a, a label deal. So this is uh, these are the people that generally fund these projects, and um, so they, they can uh, you know they're taking financial risk by by paying to to basically make the music and promote it and, mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, they usually take anywhere from like 50% to 84, 85%. Um, so <laughs> again, these are, these are pretty wide ranges. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's, there, there's all kinds of deal structures, but um, so like, in, and that's in, in, okay, so like there's 80, <laughs> let's say 50 to 84% of that gets cut in half. And then, and then that goes, maybe that at that point, it goes to the artist. And then the artist, like if you have a collaborator, then, um, and, you know, or if you have a producer or something like that, that's another percentage that goes to them first. Uh, and, th and then maybe at one point after all of that is paid back, it eventually goes to the artist. So, you know, you can start to see, if you just start to add this stuff up, I mean, you're, you're basically not, it's, it's very difficult to make make a, a consistent income on, on these things and then mm -hmm. that's just streaming so then if you go to you know let's say publishing mm -hmm. uh so again maybe for context uh every, every song that is made is split in half so okay. there's uh what we call the master side which is is the recording and that's that that has certain attributes has certain rights to it and then there's the other side which is the the sort of essence of the song and that's what we call publishing mm -hmm. so these are these are like the 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 rights of uh, the lyrics the you know the the intangible uh notes of the of the music that's that's the publishing side mm -hmm. and then that's uh, another thing where um you know at, at every step of the way there's somebody taking 50 sometimes 70 percent um of the and, revenue and that, that, that you made yeah of like of gross of what revenue gets... yeah okay yeah of all income mm -hmm. so so basically every dollar that comes in, you know, I think, I don't know what the averages are, but I think it ends up being, you know, anywhere from like the artists at the end of the day, first of all, it gets paid last mm -hmm. and they end up getting, you know, maybe, I don't know, I want to say just roughly 15 to 20% on a good day. Oh, that's so, crazy. so, <laughs> but is, is it like, like, for example, for, um, for writing my book, I, I got an advance and mm -hmm. then I'm supposed to, you know, if I pay back that advance, then I start earning a, a, like a small percentage of, of sales. Is, does mm -hmm. it work that way? Like, are you able to get an advance from publishers? 
Yes, yes. Okay. So that's okay. that, it's it's probably very similar. And by the way, the, the book is great. I haven't finished oh, it yet, yay. but <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but but it's it's great so far. But um, yeah, I I, I imagine it's somewhat similar. Uh, yeah. I don't know exactly how the deals are structured in in the publishing industry, but it is similar. It's like where they're giving you an, an advance mm -hmm. in exchange for ownership over the over the right. the asset over okay. over the album. Right. Um, but the wording is tricky. So this is where the music industry, they get very, very creative with their language and the mm -hmm. contracts. And, you know, they're like, okay, we'll, we'll give you, you know, we'll take 50% of the master, but that's, that's only 50% of like, after, you know, all these other people take their cut. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's creative word, wordplay that, you know, <laughs> make, makes you feel like you're, you're getting uh, a, a lot more, but but okay. it, 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 it's not really so so with, with the advance specifically there, there's one kind of game that the music industry loves to play which is they say uh you know you're it's a recoupable advance uh and we split it 50 50 but it's not actually really 50 50 hmm. because um so you you pay back this loan at a 50 percent rate so uh I, I don't know how this works in the publishing industry but like or, or in in the book publishing mm -hmm. industry but basically you so like if let's say they give you a hundred thousand dollars up front mm -hmm. um and uh but you actually you only pay pay that back at a at a fifty percent rate so you actually oh. have to the album has you to have earn two hundred thousand right. dollars okay. to to actually get get you know oh, to actually no. <laughs> be, be be paid back so it's right. i mean in and, and it's again tough. like to 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 be fair to them, they're taking financial risk. Yeah. They're putting resources into it. Um, you know, it's you don't have you don't have to pay it back. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they they confront you a lot of money, and you don't have to pay it back. So, like, I, I don't I don't want to paint the entire industry as this like evil corporation. Mm -hmm. I, it's it's not it it's a lot more nuanced than that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Makes sense. But I I think we've we've sort of been in this. Uh, this basically like the the music in the industry in the 50s essentially started as like basically by the mob <laughs> <laughs> and, and, seriously yeah yeah seriously and and uh, and uh yeah you look back uh i mean people will argue with that but like basically and 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 the deals were were so advantageous to the industry side mm -hmm. that we've sort of been chipping away at it over mm. over the years that we were we're at a point where it's it's a lot better Okay. Um, artists have a lot more power now, but it's still very lopsided. Right. Um, so, okay, like I feel like I've been talking, complaining about the music industry for, <laughs> for a while, but basically what, what, where crypto comes into this mm -hmm. is, is that uh, like th this is an entrenched industry. Like they control 80% of music. Uh, you know, uh, if if you want to create a platform you have to play ball with them like mm -hmm. you just can't you know due to copyright laws and they just control the industry so it, it's very you know it's very difficult to work with them and actually get uh, a fair deal basically mm -hmm. so like that's what i mean but i think it's ripe for disru disruption through technology where they can't control it mm -hmm. um so i, I i'm like there's a lot of these back-end systems where it's like, well, why do we need distribution fees? You know, that, that's sort of a legacy part of the industry where, you know, uh, people maybe, uh, you know, when you manufactured CDs or vinyl or whatever, there was a cost there and maybe that warranted taking a percentage out, you know, mm -hmm. or they negotiated rates with Walmart to have mm -hmm. your CD up, up front, you know, like right. things like that. That was maybe where distribution had a role, but these days it's it's less so. Um, it's, it's a different model now. So right. we're still kind of coming out of that late 90s era mm -hmm. and still still slowly adapting to, to the modern age. And um, so I, I like when when I first got in, you know, got into crypto, it, it just made sense to like, well, we can build like sort of an alternate system where we just bypass all this stuff. We don't like, why do we need why, why do we need all of this? You know, like if mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, we can sort of create the the data structure basically uh to support it and um and uh you know just kind of and, and it's you know it's it's all open and people can build applications on top of it it's like we can sort of build that underlying infrastructure that's fair and um 
and and then we can let a, like an actual free market flourish you know because mm -hmm. we currently don't have that so so, yeah, so how I, would how would that uh like how would this system actually work yeah i mean i i i, I can't say that i have all of this figured out mm -hmm. by any means um there's a lot smarter people than me working on this and that are, are are working very hard to like solve a lot of these problems mm -hmm. but but basically it it, in its essence, kind of what I said is like opening it up to a free market where if you have the data structure, like the, the, the ownership, um, the splits, the, uh, you know, maybe the files, uh, you know, if you have all of this in a containerized format, you know, um, you know, maybe a mix of Ethereum for, for, you know, the, the smart contract layer if mm -hmm. you will and then ipfs for the for the data mm -hmm. you know uh like i i could see a situation where people if you have that open sourced and, and available to all and like i i could see a situation where you know you could see other applications to build on top of it and and you, you could build a, a more fair decentralized spotify type streaming service on top of it and and there's a there are a lot of people that are already kind of doing this mm -hmm. but um I think the main idea is like shared open source infrastructure underlying. Let's fix that first. Right. And this is one of the things that Ujo was really trying to trying to work on. Mm -hmm. And and then from there, then we can start to talk about like the consumer layer stuff. Um, but um, we we're still not even remotely close to that. I guess. Right. <laughs> um, it, it's interesting, you know, because now now we're starting to talk to get to the the point you made earlier about um achieving scarcity because i think you know that's kind of the the big difference of with having this technology is that before you could have that kind of peer-to-peer -peer, uh community i guess or or structured for for sharing and downloading music um but the problem was that it was really hard for for artists to monetize that and you know music was able to get infinitely reproduced and you know artists would get nothing yeah. um but you know now we have a solution that's like made for that you know to to yeah. create kind of like scarce digital assets so i i agree like it, it does seem like the solution should be there um somewhere you know uh, like creating this open protocol for um, fans to uh, buy uh, their artists' um, uh, music and for artists to get properly compensated and to, you know, cut down middlemen where, wherever it makes sense. Like, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it, it does make sense to have someone who can, like, yeah, like, uh, put money up front and invest in you and, like, let, let you go out and, and, and they, they deserve a cut. But, mm -hmm. but um, so many others are maybe don't and are, are just right. making the process, you know, uh, worse and, and, and taking an unnecessary cut. Um, but I, I yeah. was going to add to your point about the, the, cause yeah, yes, there's definitely a role for labels and, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, labels get sort of like a bad rep, mm -hmm. but I actually think they, they do add a lot of value mm -hmm. many times. And, but, but to your, so like if, if we're talking about labels as purely as a funding mechanism, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like I, I think there's a lot of room for, uh, you oh, know, of course. <laughs> like yeah. crowdfunding, like that type mm -hmm. of thing, mm -hmm. for even your fans to get involved in that. And or I mean, personal like, tokens or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's all kinds of avenues to do this, and and um, like, <laughs> yeah, it's just it, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna get really interesting. Like when when you apply it, like I guess market dynamics to this, because like mm -hmm. it, especially with all these DAOs and like I I could see like a sort of label DAO type of situation where, oh, uh, you know, people, people start a DAO for, for, for you know, for, uh, basically uh, releasing music and, you know, mm -hmm. like in, and then, you know, people could pull capital and, and, and pay for these basic costs, you know, in exchange for a, a certain amount of ownership. But like, again, like opening that to a market as opposed to, to sort of, you know, being at the mercy of, of, some companies that are quite aggressive in, mm -hmm. in that. So it, it, it kind of, it democratizes it in a really interesting way. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm just kind of really interested to see where this goes, you know, yeah. in, in the next while. 
So maybe, right, I, I should maybe like modify what I said and, and it's like, maybe it, it does, it doesn't completely get rid of, of middlemen, but it does completely change like who those middlemen should be and, and just democratizes middlemen as well. Like now, mm -hmm. instead of a label, you get a DAO or something. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I mean, like, I, I think that's, that's all we're asking for is, mm -hmm. is a free market, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. and, and we, we just don't, we just don't have that, you know, right. it's, it's, <laughs> we just don't. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so you, I, I know you, you released um, your album Ego, right, with you, Joe? Um, yeah, yeah. And, and then from there, so that was like 2017, uh, like middle of the, of the bull market, but then <laughs> the 2018 came and um, how, how did that uh, progress, like your involvement with crypto? Because I, I want to get to, uh, to tape and, and all that craziness. Sorry, my, my cat is being a little a little loud right now, but <laughs> no, he's no uh... oh my god, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he might he you might hear him in the mic, but um anyway uh yeah so okay you know I, I uh th that was a really interesting time because you know I I actually again because I think maybe because my interest really lied more in the technology. I think a lot of people say that, you know, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm only in it for the tech. It's like, of <laughs> right. course there's, it's two sided, right? Mm -hmm. But but what I will say is like, um, like maybe I, I, I was interested in it on both sides, but the tech is really what kept me going, mm -hmm. especially when, when everything's, you know, falling apart. Mm -hmm. And and uh, in seeing the amount of like developers really continue to create and, and um, and I mean, things definitely got shaken up for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I was loosely, you know, through Ujo, I was like basically loosely involved with consensus. And, you know, obviously like there's all kinds of th things kind of got shaken up there. And mm -hmm. I, I was, I wasn't deeply involved, but, you know, I kind of got to be a fly on the wall and kind of see that um, mm -hmm. take shape. And, you know, a lot of people left, a lot of people moved to other projects and like things like that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, people kept building. And, and I think that's what, what really kept me interested in it. And, uh, you know, I, I saw like, you know, I mean, I sort of already knew about MakerDAO and, and like other projects like that. I saw what they were doing with synthetic assets. And um, it, I, I became a little more interested on, on, in the financial side of it. And in, I, yeah, I guess like, you know, Uniswap came about and, you know, I think basically I mean, not to discredit Payton or anything like that, but but the you know I think Vitalik posted this original idea is like, well, we don't really need order book, um, you know, uh, decentralized exchanges. We can just do like AMMs, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was, and then seeing that flourish and uh, yeah, it was just it, it, it like uh, there, it, despite the the price whatever fluctuating and people trading and whatever, uh, I saw. I saw a lot of development continue and that, that kept me really interested in it. And it, mm -hmm. it seemed like, I mean, there were definitely moments where it was like, Oh, is this really all falling apart now? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's a bummer. I mean, this was like really cool, you know, it's like too bad. Eat, eat below a hundred. Yeah, I know. It was, it, was, it was a little sad, but, yeah. but then again, it was also like the fact that people kept building on it was like mm -hmm. that to me showed that this was actually quite resilient. And, and um, I mean, I think there was a lot of moments in ETH's history that that maybe there was things were a little shaky, you know, uh, where it really was in question. But I think we're kind of beyond past that at this point, where yeah. you know, just the amount of developers that are building really interesting projects, and obviously everything's everything now is a little heightened, mm -hmm. you know, compared to that. But but at the time, you know, in in 2018, 2019, um, what I think like December of 2018, I think maybe that was like yeah the, the lowest yeah like arthur yeah. hayes being like you know celebrating sub 100 eth or whatever is like okay <laughs> dude whatever you know uh -huh. um it, it's it's sort of short-sighted you know um there's sort of people that only care about the price and i, I think that was that was kind of uh just boring to me and and like I, I but i i saw all these people like continuing to build really interesting projects so it kept like i i saw it continue to develop despite that Right. So, and, and were you just like watching it from the sidelines or were you involved in like somehow in, in all this development? I, I've kind of, I loosely stayed involved like in, in the sense that, so I was actually, um, I was, I was technically joined the Ujo team 
on mm. a part-time basis for basically like a year and a half. Oh, okay. So, so um, you know, I, I was involved in that. And, you know, the, the project, unfortunately, kind of, um, you know, through a lot of shakeups and within consensus kind mm. of, kind of fizzled out. So like my involvement also, also kind of ended there. Um, and, uh, and then m more recently, um, I, I got, I, I also actually just joined as an advisor for Audius, which is, to me, feels like m a bit of a spiritual successor. Um, mm -hmm. Also you know, a consensus? No, no, no. It's a separate. It's a. It's a separate um, project. Okay. But but it's. I think you know, sort of benefiting from a lot of the ideas that Ujo built and and, and worked on and, and and I mean, it's different. But okay. uh, you know, I, I think they solved a lot of the user experience type types mm. of issues. Nice. So uh, you know, and they really leaned into that. Where where um, yeah, I don't know, like. Uh, Ujo, like the, so much of this stuff is timing, right? Mm -hmm. And Ujo, I think maybe like it was, it was just a little too early, unfortunately. And mm -hmm. uh, so, but but anyway, like it, it, like I, my, my direct involvement was kind of waned a little bit. Like I, I was much more. I kind of watched it from the sidelines, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. Like I was still, you know, playing around with with different you know DeFi projects before they were called DeFi, I guess. Mm -hmm. But but I, I was I was definitely I was definitely interested and in I definitely followed a lot of development, but mostly I just watched a lot of projects crumble, a lot of ETH killers, you know, completely, mm -hmm. <laughs> completely fizzle out. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, yeah, I just um, I guess it's like I, I uh, like it, it really showed it really showed me like who who was generally you know building on it and mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I mean, like, I, I really kind of my, my, like, yeah, I just, I just stayed really interested in it. Mm -hmm. I did kind of explore a couple of projects with like, um, like publishing, uh, you know, tokenizing publishing assets on, on Ethereum, like things like that, mm -hmm. kind of explored some of that, but it's, yeah, it's, uh, we, we kind of realized there, there's still a lot of sort of infrastructure stuff that needs to be placed before we even start to explore that. So, um, so okay. so yeah, it's like my I, my interest definitely stayed, but it wasn't uh -huh. like you know, again always from the the sidelines, I guess. Got it. Um, and then obviously you know this year has been an, an explosion uh, again of of activity. Um, prices started to to rise. Uh, DeFi um, is is just you know blowing up right now, um, and. And you know, you also kind of were um, like front and center in in, in DeFi, like with with your own uh, project. So uh, yeah, I love to kind of hear how, how that came about. Yeah, so uh, I assume you're referring to tape, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is this this kind of landed on my lap a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so in backing backtracking to the Ujo days, uh, we talked a lot about tokenizing um like like assets or or like physical products you know merchandise of some sort you know but we we never again we kind of ran into the same issues of like ux and like how do we you know like how do we make this easy for like the you know my my typical my typical fans mm -hmm. to um to to you know interact with this like it, right. it's kind of a kind of a big problem and um so one of the guys from Ujo, Jack Spallone, he actually introduced me to Jacob from Zora. And Jacob had sort of done this project called Saint Fame, uh, which was just like a, like basically like the, I think the, the world's first internet, um, like fashion house or something like that. I think that's how they, they framed it. It's a really interesting project actually, but it was basically the precursor to, to uh, Zora and uh, so he introduced me to Jacob and we started to talk about like, what could we do? <clears throat> what, what could we do, you know, around the album, you know, uh, and what could we tokenize essentially? Like what, what's like a, this, you know, taking a little bit of this sort of drop culture from, you know, sneaker culture, that type of a thing, create like very scarce limited edition goods um, and tokenize them and open them up to a market. So, um, like this was always interesting to me, but I, I didn't like. Uh, it's it's like how do you really make that connection 
-hmm. to a physical product. So the way that they solve that, and and this is not you know purely decentralized, obviously, because you still have to trust the 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 organization that's launching it to deliver right. the product to you, right? Mm -hmm. But they solved it in a really interesting way, which is that they open it up to a market first. And then later down the line, like a couple, couple months later, then you can redeem it, effectively burning the token. And, uh, and, then, and then the organization mails you the product, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So, so it w for me, it was, you know, taking this idea of a free market, of opening up a very niche product, like a tape, you know, <laughs> a cassette tape. Mm -hmm. It's like a cassette tape in 2020 is like, you know, it, it's, it's very niche, you know, mm -hmm. it's a collector's thing. Um, and like for, for me specifically, it was just, uh, I don't know, like it was, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to do it anyway. I wasn't going to make a tape anyway. So it's like, well, why don't we just make a very limited edition thing in again, like an experiment mm -hmm. and, and sort of a conversation piece and, and, and just see what happens. And of course, DeFi, uh, <laughs> By I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> DeFi, <yeah>. DeFi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Chads uh, mm -hmm. rolled with it, and oh. um, and maybe before they were called Chads, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but it it was uh, like you know I, I kind of expected it to land. Like I I didn't know how to price it, you know, and I think that was the idea. I was like, mm -hmm. what is this worth, you know? I don't know. Like we pr we priced it at twenty, mm -hmm. uh, and I wasn't sure where it was going to go. I thought maybe sixty, eighty dollars, something like that. You know, it, it feels kind of ridiculous to pay more than that. But it went from I think twenty dollars all the way up to nine fifty or something like that, and then and then all the way I back see. down. <laughs> and uh, so we had our own little bubble, and I think it landed i think today maybe 2 22 40 something like that i haven't checked in a couple of days but um i think what what it proved to me is that um when you apply market dynamics to something like this you know it you know price discovery love it or hate it is a great way to find the value of something yeah. and um and i i guess what the market is saying is that this tape is worth two hundred and forty dollars. You know, that's like, so crazy. <laughs> you, you know, like I, I, I couldn't have guessed that. I mm -hmm. couldn't have priced that. Like if I came out of the gate and said, "Oh yeah, I'm selling this cassette for two hundred forty dollars," people were like, "You're insane! Like, what are you doing?" Right. But like, hey, I didn't decide. The market's this. the market. Um, yeah, the, the market decided. And 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 the one thing I, lo I love to say about this is like, turns out music does have value. You know, right. <laughs> like, yeah, like because. Um, uh, we, we've been pricing it incorrectly for for 20 years, um, and and uh, I think you know, I, I think it's about time we we apply a free market to music, and and yeah. then we can you know actually be paid appropriately, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean it, it's it's such a su such an interesting experiment. So um, first, like I want to understand like the mechanics of what what happens now. So. At what point, like, are, do you start delivering the tapes? And like, do you have them physically with you? Like, also, like, where can you even play these? Like, the first time I saw this, it's like, okay, you buy this cassette and then what? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, some people still have like older cars with cassette players. Maybe it works there. Right. I mean, to be completely honest, this is more of a collector's thing. It's yeah. not. It's not so like, much. You're not about, gonna listen to the album. Then. Like, it, it's not so much about the listening experience. Although I will say. Uh, I have a cassette player. I bought one, and oh, really? uh, and it does sound like a lot. Like tapes actually sound pretty good. Like mm -hmm. I, it, it doesn't, it doesn't sound that bad. But um, but, but uh, anyway. But like, so so what happens now is I think in the next couple of weeks, uh, if I if I'm correct, we're um, we're uh, it, we basically got a little bit delayed due to COVID and had some manufacturing bottlenecks, but so we would have opened it up earlier. But basically, redemptions are going to open. People burn the tokens. Uh, they come out of they go out of circulation. People can continue to trade it. I think for a year, um, and we're just going to deliver them. Uh, you know, we're just going to ship them out to to people that redeem them, and then they have the cassette and right. they can do whatever they want with it. You know, they can and then put it in the safe or they can sell it. I don't know. And then how much of, of that, um, of the, the value of, of the tape token are you getting? So uh, 
this is this is where it gets a little bit tricky and so uh i i think my understanding of it is sound so if uh if if yeah like but but basically i i think i'm the market maker so i collect 0.3 percent of of trading fees because it was a uniswap pool um we actually did switch to the zora pools now which are a little more uh are, are kind of like curve pools where they're not so steep Okay. Um, so, so they're a little bit like the prices don't fluctuate as wildly now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of something that was still kind of a learning that we, you know, th because the price fluctuated so wildly like that, that's not, it's not really what we we're going for. Um, so I, I think I collect on trading fees. So, uh, and again, I think this is an innovation like on all, uh, all accounts because, uh, for example, you know, you know, to, let's say the Kanye Yeezy example, you know, he releases his his shoes or whatever, and he sells them for $400, and they're immediately on the secondary market for 1500 you know? Right. So he doesn't get to collect on any of that. Mm -hmm. But in this in this model, you get to collect a percentage of every trade. So, right. um, and I think that's fair. I mean, this way the creator has some upside in that, and, and people can speculate all they want. Right. So if I understand correctly, I, I, I sold the first um, I, I collected maybe on the first uh, tokens that were sold, and then and then from there I collect on trading fees. Okay. So so I have I have upside. It's not, um, but it's not like in you know it's not like. So if, for example, mm -hmm. if somebody sold at nine fifty, that's not me selling at a nine fifty. It's okay. like people yeah. selling against with each, each other, other basically. Got it. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so, it, so how many? So how many took? Did you did you sell like the total supply right away, and that's the amount you got, or were you I, kind of issuing like selling them through like different periods of time? Uh, no, the, uh, that's my understanding. Is that all the tokens technically sold out, but um, but now they're being traded among people basically. Oh, okay. uh, so the, the the tokens have been traded back into the market, mm -hmm. you know, for profit, and and then that and that it just cycles through the market basically. Um, so maybe it would make sense for artists to to maybe keep like a small percentage of their token so they can kind of also share the, the upside in case the, the price of the token itself. I mean, you increases. could do that. Yeah, I, I didn't. Per well, I, I I personally I mean, we were we disclosed this, but I, I personally got three tokens um, just because I wanted to have. Of you know, I, w I wanted to have some copies for myself, mm -hmm. um, and I, I actually will be redeeming them just because uh, you know. And and the Zora team, I think maybe got one, but again, it, it was also they're not going to be trading it, it just as a matter of you know they don't want to be mar you know they don't want to be involved in the market. Right. Uh, and I think my manager got one. So it's like, <laughs> so we, I think we were allocated five, but again, we just want the actual cassettes, and um, that's it, mm -hmm. and. And, uh, and but everything else is is just uh, tr traded on the market, as as far as I understand. Got it. Um, and what else like did you learn about this experience? Like, would you do it again? Like, what would you change? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have like plans to do like other stuff. Oh, cool. uh, Yeah, it's. I mean, I feel like I maybe benefited from being the first, and it was like kind of like making a splash. It's like an interesting idea. A lot, a lot of. Twitter, crypto Twitter definitely ran with it, uh, okay. which was funny to me um, because like all these people that I followed and were like talking about it and I was like, oh, that's, that's fun. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely like to expand on it. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I just have a, a, a like, I, I think this is an interesting model moving forward to, to release merch, you know, um, and, and to sort of democratize that that sort of drop culture uh, for for other things and 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 I don't know to just find value in in like I think we we've sort of been just like we don't make like limited goods very often you know um, like or we price them incorrectly you know when we do like when I do like limited edition uh, vinyl I, you know I just price it at like you know maybe ten percent or twenty percent above above the re the regular vinyl but uh i don't know if that's really the the way to go in the future so like right. i could see uh um you know i, I just i like this idea of applying markets to physical yeah. goods i think it's interesting you know mm -hmm. um and and then also just in, in a way my audience 
you know, if, if they're savvy, they might, you know, th they can kind of benefit from trading it too. So like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just really interesting. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck to kind of continue to explore it. And, and I mean, I, I guess I, I, I can maybe talk about it a little bit. This is sort of very, um, this is kind of ongoing. We haven't really made a formal announcement or, or anything, but we're sort of exploring with uh, an, uh, some ideas of the community tokens and, um, you know, maybe incentivizing people or like rewarding people that participate in these projects uh, with like another token where, you know, they maybe they get uh, early access or discounts on other merch. Oh my God, or like, music yeah. farming? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like- I, It had to it, happen. It's, yeah, it's taking like some of those ideas. Uh -huh. Like, I, I don't want, like, it's we, like, I guess like with going into yield farming, I guess we would inevitably talk about that, but, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Like I like the idea of incentivizing people in like in in like I think w one of the things that's happening right now with yield farming is you're incentivizing like a lot of people um, to jump you know to provide liquidity and but these people are, are are not so vested in your your project necessarily so I, I in a way like I kind of want to reward people that are are my fans or I want to reward my fans basically mm -hmm. so I, I'm kind of thinking of of ways to you know, for example, like I have a Patreon, you know, it's like, what if I rewarded my Patreon supporters, right. you know, yeah. um, or my Twitch subscribers or, uh, and maybe that gave you access to my discord or, you know, like things like that. And, with, and like, with like an RAC token? I mean, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. um, like something like that. And so it's, cool. it's less about like, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, I'm not going to be like everybody in the curve pool and the Y curve pool gets <laughs> RAC token. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. You know, yeah, yeah. that's not really no, the I crowd I'm going after, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, it's essentially a rewards program when mm -hmm. it really comes down to it. So yeah. I, I'm kind of interested in exploring that. And, uh, so I don't know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see where that goes. But, um, again, it sort of has to have like an easy user experience, um, Obviously, it, like if we're dealing with Patreon and like other mm -hmm. services, it has to be a centralized thing. It's not, you know. But like I think I, I like the idea of incentivizing people to do things that mm -hmm. that uh, that you know, uh, like rewarding people for doing things that benefit me, you know, <laughs> to, to some extent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I, like there there's some dynamics there that really need to be worked out. But like in principle, I, I love that idea and. Mm -hmm. And just more broadly speaking, I, I, I've, this is something I've been thinking about a lot. Like, um, this is an argument that I like to make. It's like, okay, uh, let's, for, for argument's sake, let's say that uh, what I do uh, creating music, let's say that that has value, right? Mm -hmm. Let's not put a dollar amount on it because I don't know what that dollar amount is. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can agree that what I do has some value, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, but the only way currently for me to tap into that value is to partner with these companies mm -hmm. that take a large percentage of it, you know, and, and, and essentially, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my cat. It's yeah. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> um, it's it, yeah. It, so, so the only way for me to tap into that value is to basically uh, partner with these kind of aggressive companies that mm -hmm. take, take a very large, percentage uh, of of my income and, and uh, i've been thinking a lot about ways like well how, how do i tap into that value um and in a, in a way that rewards like how do we create an ecosystem that rewards the people involved and um in, and and I, I don't know so like there's there's sort of a lot of ideas that i'm playing with and mm -hmm. um like i don't i don't want to call this DeFi, but like it's it's sort of applying some of those ideas and like how do i how do I apply that to my world and how does that make sense for me? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and like, I, I don't like, I, I really like this, uh, even with like on, on Andre Crunch and, and like, or I don't know how to pronounce his name, but like mm -hmm. with wifey and like all, all these different projects of like, you know, just dropping it to your community and people that actually want to use it and, and, and might be interested in it. Like, I think that was a really powerful idea. And, and, um, it's kind of like it's really interesting to see all these other projects that that had VCs and like all this stuff. It's like, uh oh, <laughs> uh, this kind of changed the game. Now it's like yeah. now we have to uh, now we really have to appease the community. Otherwise, you know, everybody's going to sell our tokens <laughs> or or get forked. 
you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Crazy. Like, even with, like, swerve and curve and, like, all this stuff. It's I know. Like, it's insane. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's so interesting to see how, you know, all these mechanisms can be used outside of, of finance, potentially. And, and you know, I, we'll be super interested to see, you know, what, what you come up with um, and, you know, how, how this can be used in, in the music industry and in other industries. Um, I think it's super in interesting um, because I, I think, you know, if we've learned one thing so far is that these rewards and incentives are incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. And in, in just like, obviously, you know, people, a big part of it is they, they want to make money, but I think it's also a lot about just like coalescing around this community and like being part of like an inside joke with the mm -hmm. memes and, yeah, 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 and just like understanding what like people are talking about in this like tiny bubble. Like it's, it's fun. In the end, it's like, you know, just like a fun thing that's going on. Um, yeah, I, I no, I, I think the, the community aspect of it, I mean, especially when we're talking about forks, like that's, yeah. you can't really fork a community, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like that, that's, that's the one of really interesting side effects mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, so some of these projects that are popping up, like yams and bass and, and all these things, like mm -hmm. just the memes are like, like people are just rallying around these memes and it's kind yeah. of becoming these games. I mean, obviously there's financial incentives involved, mm -hmm. but, but it's, uh, I, it's actually really interesting in 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 light of COVID and and all this thing. It's like mm -hmm. people are, are finding that these smaller communities are actually much more enjoyable than than just yelling into Twitter all day. You know, like yeah, you know what I mean. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So so like I'm I'm really interested in in you know these smaller type you know Discord type communities. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really interesting and yeah. Um, in, in my in my own experience. Uh, I've like I've sort of had a, a community grow in Discord around around my streams and mm -hmm. and and Patreon and all this stuff and it's been a really powerful thing. Um, like my uh, I, I guess like for, for example like um, you know my my I, I I knew that my fan base was out there. You know like mm -hmm. I, I I had uh, I've had I, I was my monthly listeners on Spotify are pretty solid, pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. So I knew that these people are out there. But, um, you know, they didn't really interact with each other, you know, to some degree. So now that everybody is like in, in Twitch chat or in Discord and, and they're like sharing memes and sharing cat photos and, and uh, talking about what food they made that night and like they're, they're finding this common ground that is very, very powerful. And um, uh, yeah, I, I, I can... I'm very interested to see like where this goes because it's like maybe I, maybe my music was sort of the catalyst that brought people together, but the the people are staying for a reason. You know, it's I don't think it's because of me. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. So so like in in this way, you know, talking about tokens or whatever. If mm -hmm. if we create like a, sort of a community token, people can like where it's like a, it's a shared thing. Right. It becomes less about me. Mm -hmm. uh and and becomes more about the community and, and i think that's really interesting so, interesting. so, so um, yeah yeah i i don't know where this is going but i'm, I'm very excited about it <laughs> do you think you know it, that um so do you think that your your fan base who was not into crypto can come into this and you know like maybe come through the discord chat and and just like if they're airdropped uh like an rac token through there, I mean, do do you see that as as maybe a potential gateway gateway for like non crypto users to to start kind of interacting with this technology? Yeah. So um, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, that that is maybe a little bit of a goal of mine because I like mm -hmm. I feel like the more people kind of interact with this stuff, it's like oh, this is really cool actually. Mm -hmm. um, it, even for the non financial applications, and then you know, like I haven't even talked about NFTs or any of that. Like mm -hmm. it get it can get pretty interesting. But um, basically, like I think a stepping stone, a way to make this practical today is maybe perhaps, uh, you know, um, like a a wallet type of situation, like a like a a Web two wallet that inter that can interface, you know, with like an email login that can interface with Web three if you want, but um, not not make it a requirement, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so like people can have the tokens, can do whatever they want with them. Uh, and can move them to Uniswap and sell them, whatever. I don't know, like, you know, do, do all that stuff. 
like the, the, there's a lot of interesting applications, but um, but I I, I do want to make this very easy, uh, as easy as a login to right. um, to like to, to basically make it as easy as possible to the non crypto audience because at the end of the day, that's actually who I'm trying to reward here. You know, mm -hmm. uh, nice. you know that that's that's who I, I want I want want to you know bring into this basically. Yeah. And do you think that the, the tools are, I mean, are the tools there to do that? Uh, th there are, yeah. Um, you know, it's, I, I don't want to be too specific because like we're still kind of working some stuff okay. out, but like, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like in between, yeah, like Zora and like a couple other um, applications, I, I think, I think we can do it. And uh, I mean, the, the, I think at first, this is definitely going to be a very, like, uh, simple start, um, you know, start very small and, and, and just kind of experiment with it. Um, and, and just kind of see where it goes. But, uh, it, it's it, like, uh, I don't, I don't want to, you know, jump, jump into this and have some like massive grand plan and then nobody's interested. I, I'd rather start small and just sure. see what happens, you know? Yeah. It makes sense. Um, I think that's a healthier way to get it going. <laughs> And speaking of like your non-crypto fan base and just like mainstream users in general and, and, and you being kind of with one step in crypto and one step kind of in your, in your own industry, um, what's your, your take? I'm, I'm really interested in like all, all the craziness in, in DeFi. Like, yeah, we, we've talked uh, a bit about these communities forming around um, these like meme, meme coins, but I, I'd imagine it, it, I don't know if, it, if it's like, getting new people into DeFi or, or turning them away? Like, I'm, I, I don't know yeah. like what it's doing to like the mainstream people because it, it, I don't know, it sounds, it can sound a little scammy or, or scary yeah, yeah. or just like completely crazy. What's your take? Yeah, um, no, I, I think it's, it's kind of everything, right? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, the, and this is actually one thing I like about crypto is that it's, you, like it brings everything it brings the the really interesting high quality you know cool projects and then it also brings you know like like pasta and like you know <laughs> spring roll and shroom yeah. and like all these like these mm -hmm. food-based meme coins mm -hmm. which I, I you know like some of them i mean it's, it's like it's funny because like when sushi swap launched people are like uh it's like oh it's just another scam coin but then you look into it, it's like oh they're like they have 72% of Uniswap's liquidity like locked in their contracts. Like, oh, this is what's going on here. You know, this is like, um, anyway, it's just like it's people had theorized about, you know, stealing liquidity from different protocols and, uh, but it, it, it's fascinating stuff. But uh, d d I guess like, that's one thing that I personally like about it, but like how it's perceived on the mainstream, um, that is obviously concerning. Um, mm -hmm. Because like I have like you know I I am into this stuff uh, and like talking with my friends, we're always kind of like, you know, you, you stick it in cream and then put it, in, <laughs> you, you like uh, and you know the shrimp tokens and then tendies and like all these like weird food based like yams and like uh, it's ridiculous to to the outsiders, to to outsiders. But then again, I think that's actually a way to obfuscate, um, like some of the interesting stuff is happening. Uh, like, I, I think to give Yam a little bit of credit, I mean, obviously there were some problems <laughs> to put it lightly, <laughs> but, but like this idea of coalescing around uh, just like bootstrapping a group of people and then literally figuring out what you're going to do with it mm -hmm. later on, I think is a kind of fascinating. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like, it's like, let's just get together. Okay. We're all in this together. We're financially vested in it to some degree. Let's see what, um, let's see what we can do, you know, with this. So I think that idea is really interesting. Yeah. Um, but like, I've, I feel bad for people like buying into it because they're, you know, they're immediately going to be, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, I feel like there, there's, there's a lot of good stuff and there's a lot of bad stuff and it's all at the same time. And it's yeah. up to the individual to sort of, siphon through it and mm -hmm. I, I i am and that's what happened in the ico era i mean there was a lot of uh, icos that were actually very high quality and and delivered on the promises and 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 um and that was great but there was a whole lot of scams too and uh i, I will say like DeFi, i feel like 
none of my normie fans or f f friends like know anything like e even people like from uh like 2017 that were into crypto are just like what yeah. like yeah, yeah so so to some degree i feel like this is sort of like an internal bubble mm. to some degree uh mm. i mean that's just sort of my impression i don't know uh like i <laughs> it, it's like I haven't gotten that high school friend that's like, tell me about DeFi, you know, like that, yeah. that hasn't happened. And that definitely happened in, in 2017, you know. Mm -hmm. You're right, people... maybe maybe it is a little bit insulated on, you know, the kind of high complexity and high craziness of it all is kind of insulating uh, this DeFi bubble and just keeping it within more like DeFi crypto natives, which I think, you know, with everything that's going on, uh, it might be a good thing for now. Um, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, we, all we, for like mainstream adoption, but not, not sure if I want just like my mom uh, playing with all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, my I, dad. Like, <laughs> like I, I've actually like, the, the few people that have even asked me about it, uh, I've, always, I've, I've been pretty upfront. It's like, unless you're willing to really spend the time to dig into this is probably not worth your time. You know, just, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it just, yeah. it's like, obviously there's uh, DeFi protocols that I think are uh, good, good. I mean, safe enough yeah. for, for mainstream, but not, not all these like food, <laughs> food meme uh, mining. Stuff. Right. Um, yeah. 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 No, there, there's, there, well, I, I, I even mentioned this on a, on a tweet recently, but, um, there were, there's actually a podcast that uh, uh, Eric Voorhees, like crypto OG, um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you know him, but he he did this podcast for I think for Bankless, and he he had this analogy that I really liked, and I, I keep talking about this, but uh, of of basically like this sort of like like crypto is sort of a like it's organic or it's like an organism, and and it's sort of like the the uh, I think he talked about it as a forest where where there's a lot of like really good projects and there's a lot of really bad projects and some grow and some die. And, mm -hmm. and then the, but some of the ideas permeate and they're iterated on and, and all these different projects learn from that and be like, okay, well that didn't work. Let me try this. Maybe this will work. And that, then that doesn't work. And then maybe finally we get like a good quality project that learned from all these other ones. And, and that is actually what we end up using. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I love that idea and, and that's sort of how I think about it. And that's why I'm not so critical of, of a lot of these kind of, you know, garbage projects, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, because like, we'll learn from it, from them. Right? I, I, that's my hope is like, mm -hmm. I, I try to look at it from, from the bright side and, and be like, okay, well, what, what, what's, what can we learn from this? What can we, you know, t take out of it? And, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's like, I, I don't know, I, I just find it endlessly fascinating. And it's, I feel like every day, there's like a new project, there's like, whoa, I didn't even think about that. You know, it's like, yeah, it's great. Um, it, it's uh, like, specifically with Swerve lately, or, or, or yesterday, or, or something like, it, like, they were just like, we're gonna make the same exact thing as Curve, but take out all of the, <laughs> like, cut out literally everybody, <laughs> yeah, except the liquidity providers. And it's like, I mean, that's, uh, well, what, 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 there was like this saying that like in um, everybody was talking about in 2017 is like, well, we'll just fork your project and take the token out. And now it's like the opposite. Yeah, yeah. Where, so where it's like you'll we'll fork the project and add a token and, and give it to everybody that's involved. So uh, I I don't know. Maybe the the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle. Um, but again, like I, I think like the the community is hard to fork. The team is hard to fork. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to learn a lot from these and um, uh, like all, all the stuff that's happening with like uh, uh, Alameda and like trying to, to get Sushi to move over to, to Sierra. I'm like, I, I, I like yeah, this, it's, all this combative <laughs> stuff is like It's like a soap opera. It's like yeah. all, all these power plays coming into, into it as well. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, there's definitely this trend of, you know, if, if you're not providing as much value to the community and to users as possible, we'll fork you and you know create a, a token that delivers that value. Um, mm -hmm. And you know that happened to Uniswap, happened happening um, with Curve, and it's it's fascinating. And it's you know it, it's um, similar to what might happen to the music industry, right? It's mm -hmm. like there's this industry that's 
is not providing all the value that it could to creators. Um, and so, you know, creators like yourself might fork it and, and right, you know, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it on like an open space. And um, I, I love all this stuff that we, we, we talked about. It just really kind of blows my mind where, you know, all, all, all these new paradigms that, that we might start seeing um, because we talked about music um, distributed in uh, an open network, right? But also uh, an, another way to monetize uh, creators with these drops that, you know, it, it enable kind of a real market discovery of, mm -hmm. of, of, of what they, they are, you know, valued. Um, and, you know, we talked about how DAOs even can, can play a part in this. So it, it's fascinating. And yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously like, it, it's amazing to see you kind of uh, experimenting with, with all this and, and seeing where it goes. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm legitimately always just really excited to wake up and look at Twitter and see what happens, you know, like, <laughs> while I was asleep. Because yeah. like every day there's like some new thing happening and gives me more ideas for like other things to build. And um, it's such an exciting time. And uh, yeah, I, I, I realize that I'm, I am a little bit of an outsider, but I'm also just like, now, I'm basically trying to watch it and learn from it and, and, and just try to apply it to my own world and 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 uh, hopefully show other artists that there's there's like value here and and that you can really like uh, that, like you can take control over your own career in, in a way that uh, a lot of that you really couldn't you know yeah. uh, before so uh, I'm just trying to accelerate that. Awesome. No, I, I really hope more more people outside, you know, of crypto or like working in crypto can start using these tools. And I mean, I don't think you're really you're an outsider. Like you're you're experimenting <laughs> with this stuff as much as you know anyone. So um, yeah, but I it, it's like like I said, it's it's uh, you have like one foot in in another industry, and hopefully, you know, more more people uh, will start kind of putting their foot in, <laughs> into, into yeah, crypto yeah. as well. Um, so great, Andre, really, you know, uh, I, I need to start wrapping up, but um, such yeah, yeah. an interesting conversation. <laughs> thank you so much again. Yeah, yeah no, th thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I got to finish your book, but uh, it's, it's been awesome so far. So <laughs> thank you for that. Awesome, great to hear. And I'll be looking forward to that RAC token. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> you heard it first here. I guess, I guess, I, I guess, I, I kind news. of, I, I guess, I pre-announced it here. Uh, but yeah, we're no, we're still. It's just, uh, it's an idea for now, but we're kind of exploring it. But yeah, no, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.